Yeah, smart Zeppelin games here. Let's play Zeppelin Raider Imperial German Naval Airships. Uh, solitaire yeah, board game, putting you in charge of a airship of a Zeppelin in World War One, and yeah, and operating it and commencing scout anti-naval or bombing raids. Yeah, we already checked that title out. Uh, out. I made a content video on that. However, rules were somewhat different from the other games, like Interceptor, Night Factor, and those U-Boat games. And back in the day, didn't have the time to dig into that. Now I did that. Have some basic understanding of the game. Required me also to venture out to board game geeks to the forums, where also. And it is always a good idea if you struggle with some rules of a board game to check that location. You will find often somebody else that had the same issue and often even the authors are there in order to clarify things. That is also here the case. I also mentioned that the rulebook is somewhat <clears throat> not the best of, he, of his works. I find, find it pretty good. But sure, there's some specific gameplay aspects uh, which represent Historical airship operation are like gas cells, ballast, fuel, altitude rise or descent. But I quickly found my information in order to have a basic idea now and now I will con conclude or continue with some gameplay because I'm really eager to experience a game in gameplay. However, it will be still a laid-back stream, yeah, if you look for some professional rules or tactics video, rather consult some of those um, physical board game videos you might find on YouTube. We'll, of course, try to apply those rules correctly, but we'll still need some time to check those charts and perhaps also the rules. Yeah. So... We first need to determine the start date. You start the game basically... Early start date would be August 14. However, that is an optional game start. Official or game start is May 15. You could perhaps treat that somewhat being a tutorial phase. Uh, because you will be using the... Martak or the Mike or M class, that is the first airship that, or Zeppelin that is available to us. However, it is somewhat limited by its small fuel uh, tanks. And it is very unlikely that you will commence bombing operations against Britain, for example, because that airship almost can't reach that, only can reach the British coast under very perfect wind and weather circumstances. You start a game, yeah. I won't present much of the module, check out my content video, which you might want to use in conjunction with this gameplay video. Yeah, as many of those games you come with a commandant, we will also roll for names and usually you start the game with one prestige. This means I will somewhat still make some holidays, uh, work at the Zeppelin Schule, and start the game in May 1915, where the P class becomes available and costs us one prestige to operate. Yeah, so we will not use the M class, but the P class. I think that is also the Zeppelin that is on the cover. Yeah, further, I mean, I already showed those other ones. There's more advanced ones, which you then might gain command over, or you might want to start the game at a later date. Yeah, up, I think, to the Z class. No, X-Class, yeah, that was probably the most advanced. Yeah, July 18. Yeah, it can raise way higher altitudes. There's a bigger fuel, really big fuel tank. And a lot of more systems, but we will use the P-Class. Paula class. We'll start with a train crew. And yeah, first things we will do is determine a starting base. There is in the manual a section rebasing. We will roll for ra if you start tutorial, you start in Nordholz, which was probably the most advanced Zeppelin base. But we will roll for random assignment. 
the mic receiver base, which is not that good for landing or starting those Zeppelins. 1 to 6. We roll 6. We are based. Okay, I'm um, somewhere in at the border or occupied territory here. That is our base. Good, next we will roll for names. I like that idea. Oh yeah, we can also roll for Zeppelin number P class. We are starting May 15. We roll 1d10. We receive the number Luftschiff 10. Uh, we can already lock that. Yeah, for some reason there's no room for that here. Let's see how I will do that. Perhaps if I switch to white color here, I can simply write it here. L10. Ah. There's also some custom um, lock sheets on Board Game Geek. One thing I found also is somebody designed an entire add on for it Imperial German Airship Army Airship Service in the East. I already checked out that zip file. That is an entire expansion with new counters, everything. Which you might print out yeah, for your physical board game, or you might import that into your Vazar module. I showed you that it's not that difficult. So, entire expansion for free by the community. I prepared some here Hindenburg engine. We might run that in the background, we'll see. Good, next we will roll for commander name. And that was the end chart, the name chart. Okay, first name is uh, one, what is it, 2d6. Yeah, that is, must be a 2d6. We roll 44. Magnus. Magnus. <laughs> that was my side rolls for me, I could... Oh, we are fun. Yeah, we are we are some some um, noble. Uh, okay, fun. And uh, now we need to roll. What is it? One d six. Four. Uh, Magnus von Losnitzer. Jimmy, that is a name. Jimmy, that might be my new channel name. Magnus von Losnitzer War Games. Jimmy, that is really some exclusive war gaming. Uh, That might be my new um, username at what's a game called Fortnite? Yeah? Magnus von what? Lostnitzer. No, I don't play Fortnite, but it might be time now. Magnus von. No, not Liz. Why is Adobe so slow to... What is he... God, you see the background calculating the distance between the moon and the sun while typing, or what is it going on? Good, Magnus von Losnitzer, we already have a rank. It is here, we are... Captain Leutnant. That is rank 2. We are Oberleutnant zu see. Uh, but because I'm nobility, uh, I'm allowed to command an airship. Or oh, is it coming with some penalties? Yeah, I will decrease my rank. But probably historically, yeah, that is also the same in the U-boat games. Might be that simply those lower ranks didn't command the entire ship, or like in a submarine game where you start, what can you start as Oberleutnant? Uh, could be, I don't know, but usually probably Oberleutnant was rather the some other officer on board, not the Carline. Captain Leutnant. Yeah, but here we will start. Here with, uh, you can also gain here some nice ah, yeah, prestige is gone. Because we had to invest that into our P-class. Good. Is there anything else to roll? 
Magnus von Lausnitz, such me that is absurd. That sounds so noble. Yeah, I think that's it. We have a name, we have a base, we have a number. Good. Uh, now our airship, we might need to ready that up. We can carry up to four bombs. But perhaps first row for assignment. And then we will see what we will load under that. Is there anything else I need? No. We need now to roll. Yeah, you can also use historical commanders. <laughs> Good, it's 15. How oh, is that 2d6? Uh, that is uh, 11. Bomb hole, Grimstone, Grimstone, what is it? Good, let's check the map. Ah, Grimsby. Okay, that is our target. So we will go on a bombing mission. Ah oh yeah, we can also mark our base. But okay, that is the mark I was looking for. Good. Then let's load. Then I had some sequence of play in order to help me somewhat. Ah, that is a dock. To dock. Yeah, okay, I will figure it out. It's great to have some sequence of play. Yeah, we will definitely load our bomb. Our yeah, bomber. I wanted to say. I uh, already have that on the... Yeah, we might encounter aircraft. Good, those power flares will help us to locate bombing target. Sushi, those airships try to bomb at night. Time is not represented in this game, I think. And we will now load four bombs. Yeah, those f flame bombs. I'm not sure what is the... We want to bring them. That is our maximum load. Now we could load further bombs. But need to decrease ballast. To somewhat limit our... Do we want to do that? I mean, we have no idea how our airship will behave. Perhaps let's go on a regular bombing run. So I need to quickly check out those incendiaries. Um, those, those, yeah, flaming bombs. Do you have some special rules or can I simply load them? Are they? Can we either take us one bomb or two? Oh, okay. Perhaps let's do a regular bombing run, find out, and then on the next mission we might fly some, if he survives, uh, we might fly here some special bomb loads. Some tiles take double damage from those flaming bombs. Yeah, I w uh, just tried to, f I skimmed the rules, couldn't find out that fast when I should rather bring bombs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, as I mentioned, it would be nice to have some further information, but we can also check out the charts. That might be here. Okay, they all have the same bombing chance. Bomb damage. Okay, bombs are doing more damage. We need two damage. Scoring two damage on whatever target with an Asterix. Um, later we will receive a lot of targets in the 
in the target region. However, uh, those they might, but you need to stay in the area. Yeah, you might drop one or two of them. Then you, however, you need to also consider that for every bomb you can carry two of those. So that might be even. Yeah, difficult. I mean, you can carry two of those per bomb. We can mix it up. Yeah, let's do it. Later. We will drop one bomb and bring two of those. Seems like that is rather a good trade. Yeah. There might be special targets that might be rather requiring bombing. Yeah, you could even bring further by dropping ballast stuff, yeah, as I mentioned. Or you could raise ballast by dropping bombs. Yeah. But in the beginning I might not go with those. Because um, dropping ballast, of course, limits. You can use it in order to lower altitude. Which will also, your altitude will also rise after dropping two bombs. Which is usually a good thing, especially our airship is staying at medium altitude. Some, uh, some airships might go to extreme altitudes where it might be not that good anymore when it comes to wind. Yeah, let's try this out, don't modify anything and then when we find out how it behaves. Good, we are loaded full on, full on fuel. Here we will also gain one lift. And here we will gain for one lift. Engines running. Now we need to determine weather. And then wind. That is for once in a mission the weather can change. Good, we will, we will go for takeoff weather and <clears throat> we are... What is the starting date here? May, right? So it is spring. Yeah, some chance for snow. The manual states that only rain on start will call off a mission, but it can happen, mid happen mid-mission that it is raining. However, somebody then was asking what is with snow and then the, I think the auto responder that snow will also go for mission cancel. Yeah, so that might, in some rules might be not specified, there's only rain. But it is nevertheless right now not really an issue for us because yeah, it is May 15. In the winter you gain one ballast, okay, and probably yeah, because of the temperature. So we roll 1d6. It is 6. Rain. Yeah, mission call off. Which is historically, yeah, those airships often didn't operate, sometimes struggled with... So May won't happen. Because of bad weather. And we, yeah, this month was really bad for operations. And this mission was called off, and we need to re roll. Uh, 10. Scouting E. Okay, uh, this time we're on a scouting mission. And we are scouting for naval activity on Sector Echo. Yeah, scouting. You might drop those bombs and you might gain extra, extra ballast. Because bombing naval targets, yeah, that didn't happen often. You can't do it in the game. It is very dangerous. You might be subject to anti-aircraft fire. Not to aircraft, because at this time... There wasn't really that much those and um, most aircraft didn't have the range. 
Historically, it never happened. I think uh, not, not sure if there was ever an airship that successfully bombarded a uh, ship. Of smaller stuff, but a warship, I doubt, because it is simply hard. It's a moving target and whatever, you can do it. So we might drop all bombs, yeah. I will start them at the board here for quick access. And we gain one extra ballast. Now I want to say if we drop bombs we would even have more lift. But I don't think you can store additional lift. You can only gain one ballast. In order to maintain the balance and that's it. But you don't gain extra lift of flying empty. Perhaps you want to bomb a uh, noob airship commander destroys battleship with airship. Yeah, it would be possible that you could bomb a battleship. Or you might simply die. Even the manual states specifically you sh should rather watch out doing that. And that makes absolutely sense, a airship over a warship. I mean, sure, high altitude, yeah, but nevertheless, yeah, they will blow you out of the sky there. Is there anything else we can load? No. We can bombard them with supplies. <clears throat> okay. We are empty. And we will do again a weather check. Now, <clears throat> yeah, we lose one ballast even. However, I think now it is safe to say because we dropped our entire bomb load, we gain that again. Normally it would be like that. Now you could say, I don't know. Yeah, but I think as the manual specifies, per two bombs you can gain one ballast. In the summer, because of the different temperature, you might lose that, but I think we are back on extra. Cleary, windy. Okay, yeah, it is windy and we need to roll for wind. Direction. I think it was on the board here. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Yeah, that is basically the wind direction. Northeast. And yeah, that comes with some special rules. If you roll with the wind, you are using less fuel, or you can even drift. You can disable your engines and drift. If you do it with the wind, you need to expand double of the fuel amount. Okay, we are ready for takeoff. Was a chart for takeoff incidents or whatever. I don't think so. Oh, okay, there's some aircraft encounters. But I think there was somewhere I read that at some boxes you need to treat them as not. Yeah, I guess at some seat boxes you don't. Here, yeah, I think in those boxes, if you would drop, um, go for an aircraft encounter, you need to... Uh, here it would be okay. Here perhaps as well. But some aircraft could perhaps reach out that far. I think I read something in the manual, some boxes you need to treat. Whatever, yeah, we will do it as I see fit. I think an F, I mean, sure, there would be some aircraft that could reach out that far, but...
Roll over north, three boxes, land box, and after bomb drop. North three boxes. That's basically all here. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. But I think I read something in the manual. Somewhere that some boxes you should treat this as not happening because of limited distance for uh, limited interception distance. Otherwise, they would shoot down those airships left and right. Uh, there were simply some areas where the airship, airships was rather safe because they couldn't be reached. Yeah, I still was looking for, but I think there is nothing for starting. Something like starting incidents, awesome. Navigation. No. What we need to do is to roll for this here, yeah, exactly. But we will do that after the start. Good. We are launching a... What was a chip up? <laughs> yeah, nice sound. Yeah, you gain one altitude for free by having engines on. That is dynamic lift. That is basically what you have always, so if I put the engines out I always lose this altitude or if I lose half of my engines, I think the dynamic lift is also gone. And if you somehow may, may manage to repair them or reactivate those engines you will regain. Good. When do I need to roll for that mechanical breakdown before entering? Take off weather, load, take off. Travel one box, check random, bombing routine, roll for encounters. Okay. Repeat steps. Good. Okay, I have an idea. Good. So first, we travel one box. Now first we... <coughs> yeah, travel one box is first. So we travel to Charlie. Jimmy, without bringing my base, I was exactly thinking that this will happen some one. Okay. Now we roll for random mechanical breakdown. <coughs> That is 2d6, 8, everything is fine, yeah? Now we will roll for encounters. That was an E chart. Ah. ah, weather change, yeah, weather change also. We'll prepare those charts. Weather change. Yeah, it's the next W2, and then we need to roll on Alpha 2, Alpha 3. But it is only bombing encounters. Yeah, here, encounter. Aircraft, aircraft, ship.
Okay, better change. Six, no change. Now we will roll for scouting encounters. Yeah, those rules are indeed somewhat convoluted. Uh, I'm rolling that already on travel. I could already spot on travel some ships. Order each North Sea water box rolls for random encounter. Yeah, we might find other targets by proceeding to that target. And the mission is already successful, you don't need to identify something in the target. Even if you identify something beforehand. The mission will count. Ah, here. Okay. Now that is specifying it. Only sea planes or float planes over sea tiles will be allowed to happen as I encounter. Fighters and such only happens over land or coastal areas, I think. Yeah, because sea planes or whatever they might come. They might, of course, have a bigger distance. Okay, now we have an idea. So we roll 2d6. We roll 5, nothing spotted. So we are proceeding. Ah, yeah, yeah. I also need to spend fuel. Uh, pet 2 tiles. You spend 1 fuel. We are not against the wind direction or with the wind direction, so we gain neither advantage or disadvantage. One half of the fuel is spent. We might now also decide to rise the altitude. Which I will do by dropping ballast. And with this we gain one altitude. Because I want to go up as high as possible. And we're proceeding to Foxbot. We are rolling for mechanical failure. Nine, nothing happens. We roll for weather change. Nine. Yeah, weather is changing to rain. Might be not really good for scouting. Minus three. Ah, no, not heavy rain. 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 Minus two. Minus two lift, I guess. Is that correct? We might need to drop ballast in order to maintain altitude.
and also the wind will might change. Yeah, and there might be a penalty for that. Wait, penalty. I mean, it makes sense. We will be pushed down. And we need to drop our last. Yeah, we need to drop ballast or either we will push it down. Yeah, here the example specifies it. We also need to re-roll wind direction. 1d6 by weather change. 4. Wind is indeed shifting. That is rather in our favor. And yeah, rain comes with minus 2 if I want to maintain that low altitude. I already need to drop 2 ballast. However, now I need to go further. I want to go race to medium altitude. And there is now, you see those medium low area. If you transition to them, it comes with further difficulties. First, you need to pay the usual amount of ballast in order to race up. Then, there is some automatic venting. Once you transition to those areas, low, medium, high, very high, which means we will have one need to vent our gas cells in order to maintain altitude. If we do nothing, we will go back to two. So we need to drop another ballast. Yeah, that is so, something that is was quite challenging in you know, order to figure it out with the rules. But to summarize it, for if you transition to those, you need to pay a penalty of one ballast. Only once in the mission. And then it is basically simulating that you figured it out. You need to pay one penalty for those gas cells. Every gas cell has three abilities to vent and they are empty. They are usually used in order to push the airship down. But here you use them for automatic venting when going one up. And further penalty is basically one ballast. Yeah, so you're paying one gas cell, one ballast in order to switch to this new altitude band. But once you paid this penalty uh, of one gas cell part and one ballast, you are for the remainder, remaining of the mission allowed to bypass. There's also a marker for that, I think. Yeah, whatever, we can... Normally I think there's... A, I think the ma manual say there's a further counter which you can put here in order to memorize that you paid basically that penalty for a specific band, altitude band, where we paid it for medium. So in the future we don't need to do that again, the special... to again pay for those special requirements. It's not really that important, I mean, I can memorize that. I think it looks somewhat similar like that one here. But coming without numbers. Doesn't matter, yeah. You can also use it like that. Or something like this. Medium, we vented once and paid the pen that 
because venting is also pushing you down and then you need to pay a second ballast to yeah, simply trying to simulate the challenges to um, for our airship to raise altitude and you see we're already down to very low ballast because we forked against the rain and yeah I don't even have enough ballast to raise to high altitude perhaps I have but we also need to incorporate damage or whatever we might encounter good now we basically did everything here and yeah, wind change no mechanical breakdown and we will go again back to the Perhaps I will put the... Because I only always need to see my Zeppelin. I don't think I need those counters anymore. Basically, yeah. Keep them around. Like that. And like that. Eight. Found nothing. Unfortunately. We are proceeding. Wait, one fuel, two fuel. I've really expanded already two fuel. And I expanded one, two, another half fuel already on that. And at least in the target area, you are allowed to stay and re-roll on scouting results. If I remember correctly, or was it only for identification? Otherwise, because if you don't find anything, what happens? Yeah, sure, it would be realistic that sometimes you head out and find nothing. Just want to find out if you can roll multiple times on a single tile for scouting as long as you have few fuel. I definitely know you can roll multiple times for identification. Steve does success with Zeppelin arrives at the specified location at least one group ship was identified somewhere. So you need to arrive at that location, but you can ID a ship somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, that's not specified, but I think you can't re-roll. Uh, if you re manage not to find anything on the way to the Stark location or way back home. Yeah, so it was simply bad luck. So we are now in the Stark location, we need to roll again for mechanical breakdown. We roll 10 and yeah, we have engine trouble. That is currently doing not too much, but if a second engine fails, we will lose one altitude. And also suffer penalties in combat. Yeah, we don't need to roll for weather change or wind change because that is now set. We need now only to roll for encounters. Seven, nothing. Yeah, we could now head back with the wind. Which means you pay no fuel, I think. Yeah. Would make sense. Bravo. 
But doesn't matter, we can also go to Foxtrot and then, yeah, doesn't matter. Good, scouting location reached, you didn't find anything, but that mission prerequisite is fulfilled. I'm going down one fuel. I don't know what, I will not always flip that marker, I will do it like this, zack, zack, yeah. On one further fuel we gain one lift. Which, because I don't want to raise my altitude right now. I want to keep some ballast for whatever happens. And yeah, mechanical breakdown, now we can do a repair roll. Oh, when is the uh, repair happening in the sequence of play? Then we basically figured out, I think, at least some crucial stuff. Attempt to repair damages after everything. I wonder if you can do that in the same turn where you suffer damage. Normally, by following that chart, we could already attempt one repair roll. I think so, uh, otherwise it would be put before that. Repair rolls, repair rolls. Uh, here. One, two are fixed. Okay. And if we roll five, six, we even waste that entire engine. And we repaired it, yeah. But that was on the roll before, so damage marker. Is it flipping? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Might keep that around, we might need that in the future. But I need to roll for another mechanical breakdown now. Six, everything is fine. Encounter. Ten. Yeah, finally, a ship group was identified. That is nice. Because now we can also stay here, as long as we have fuel. Because we need to fight against the wind, so you need to pay half fuel in order to stay at the location. Basically representing that, otherwise the wind would blow you away. Yeah, a uh, ship group. Uh, do we really need that? But whatever, I was spotted here. We will now go for a scouting roll. We have a probable ID. We need to still roll if it is a warship in order to resolve anti-aircraft fire. Oh yeah, I didn't do the navigation roll, is that a modifier here? Yeah? So only for bombing. That's only for bombing. Scouting procedure. procedures. He may choose to close to get a better look. No. Probably identified, yeah, that is what I did.
Ah, that gives us prestige points if we positively identify battleships or armored cruisers. So that is the reason why I want to go in there. Because I don't want to do that. I was that when a scouting mission is that I might successful. Like this here is described but not really in a satisfying fashion. Do we require a POS ID? I guess if you require by spending fuel. Positively identified, at least one ship, okay. Ah, tree. Good. So we got only a probable ID. Which I assume is not good enough. So I decide to stay here. We could now get closer to get a better scoring roll. It's 50 50 right now. Is it a rain modifier? I would expect a rain modifier for that. So we will stay here. And expand half fuel. And we might need to expand a full fuel because we also need to fight against the wind. Can I stay at the location? No, I don't think it is half. Otherwise, you simply turn off the engine. And yeah, we are now here on minus one. Means we are gaining one altitude. Because we're getting lighter. Yeah, it definitely takes some effort to figure out some sort of rules that is. But also, this game is somewhat unique, but I think now, at least when it comes to basic operations of that Zeppelin, um, might cut out some of those parts. And yeah, we need to roll again for mechanical breakdown. Ah, 
two engines failing. Which means we're losing dynamic lift, dropping one altitude. I have three crew. So it is enough to fix the damage. If you would have a lot of damage, you can only assign three crew members. I will... What do I need to do else? Yeah, I will do that in, in the end. I will again roll for ID. What was that again? Yes, man. He could decide to get closer. But if we identify an enemy warship, you even need to roll, even if you receive probable ID, which is not good enough. But you then need to do a roll if it is a warship and might receive anti aircraft fire for that. I think currently we are fine on the fuel, on the other hand, uh, we are dropping to 50%, we need to, uh, but it should be fine, we can then travel with the wind back to home. So I don't need to do uh, to bring my airship into danger. Roll again. Scouting roll. 10. Yeah, failed again. Now repair attempt. 1, 2. First engine didn't repair. Second engine repaired. And we gain lift again by having dynamic lift operational again. It was also important. Ah oh, no, I think on the half engines you can still fight the wind, but if it would be heavy rain or whatever, you might be blown away from the location with 50% engines operational. If I would now have no engines available, I would be also blown away from that location by the wind. So I'm still fighting the wind. And yeah, I'm using the fuel in order to maintain a location. And we can roll again for mechanical breakdown. 11. Oh, this doesn't sound good. We again have engine trouble. We again lose hate. We roll again on the ID chart that was the lower numbers are successful. Fail. It's always a 1 to 6 and then it is bad. We try to repair our engines. One engine fails completely to repair. That thing is not repairable anymore. Second engine fails us to completely repair and now it's becoming dangerous. I can still maintain location. I couldn't go now against the wind, but I can stay with the wind. Question is now if I expend more fuel by that. I don't think so. So again, we're spending fuel because I'm still trying to identify the ship group. And yeah, I already adjusted for hate. Again, roll for mechanical breakdown. Five, I think that should be fine. It's the higher numbers that give you breakdowns. Oh no, that is mixed. Okay, nothing happened, luckily. Yeah, repair attempts can't be... Those engines are down. Scout. Oh, Junge. Fails. Again, expanding fuel to maintain a location. Roll for mechanical breakdown. Five, that was close. Yeah, I think one to four is mechanical breakdown. Yeah. Actually, look at those rolls. Eh? Sometimes was uh, they give me a call. And yeah, we roll for identification. 
which fails again. I expending fuel in order to stay in that zone. I roll for mechanical breakdown. And yeah, we have a mechanical breakdown. Four wars, what was the gas cell? One gas cell is leaking. Do I need to roll for which one? Wait, there's a specified. Can I decide which gas cell is leaking? I guess so. Or is there a roll one to which gas cell is impacted on? The repair roll. Fifty-fifty. But if it is leaking, are we losing altitude because of that? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But it can only leak until empty. But we might lose altitude because of that. <coughs> yeah, uh, scouting attempt. Finally, we got it. Good. We ID'd it. What is it? Two D six. Six is a merchant group. Unfortunately, no warship, otherwise we would gain prestige. So we identified a merchant group here. This one crew I will attempt repairing my leaking gas cell. We succeed, yeah. No gas is leaked and we can maintain altitude. Mission done. And we are heading back home. We are heading with the wind. Doesn't require us fuel. As far as I'm correct. Need to roll for mechanical breakdown. Seven, that is fine. No mechanical breakdown. Um, we might roll again for a ship encounter. Let me check that chart. Oh, that is somewhat convoluted, okay. Ten, another ship group sighted. See if we can pause ID it. Yeah, and we do it. What is it? Four destroyers. Yeah. Okay. But you only get um, points for armored cruisers, battleships. So yeah, that is nice. Ah, we also need to roll for the wireless. Was it uh, something? Was the wireless? But I think if everything is operational, it's basically a safe roll. There was something one or higher. But if you fail or have something... So it was also quick, briefly stated. So it was a wireless. Very briefly. He then sends a report. Yeah, but
Ah, yeah, probably identification does not count as a successful mission, okay. It was also with this wireless radio. Is it an optional rule or what is it? Maybe we could attempt to bomb merchants. That's something we might do next time. Merchants are not firing anti-aircraft on you. So you can attempt to bomb them. Not not sure for what that is good. Ah yeah, counts towards victory conditions. But uh, again, yeah, that is... Not really that historical. I don't know where I read that with a wireless. We can also check out the charts, what is happening if my wireless is taken out. If broken, plus two to rescue if ditched at sea, plus one to navigation rows. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Probably not required. Here, he may cho choose a role for scouting at 1 plus. And any other modifiers and send it in. Uh, and send in a report if his wireless is operational. Oh, and probably identified the encounter is ended. Uh, is that correct? So it might be even worse than I was thinking. I think I read somewhere you can re-roll those IDs. But then, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah? And then scouting will be way more difficult. The good news is when taking anti-aircraft fire is the Zeppelin scouting result becomes positive ID regardless of what he wrote. So that is the risk versus reward thing here. Um, what I did is pro probably not, uh, is likely not allowed. Uh, you can't stay there and roll, roll, roll until you gain a pause ID. But you need to decide if you go closer but might face anti-aircraft fire in case it is a warship. I like that idea, yeah. Um, otherwise, if you roll for probable ID, um, ship, the encounter is ended, the ship group is gone, and you will not receive a successful mission. So that makes, of course, uh, those scouting missions also more exciting. Otherwise, it would be, say, sitting there ducks and waiting. I mean, I now ended this mission like this, it's okay, but that was not really correct play. Next time I know. Good, okay, we are heading to base. And now we need to check if I can get to the ground. But it's safe. We have enough ga gas cells. I don't need to check that. I don't know what happens if you would have, if you would be stuck somewhere at a at a altitude. The landing is landing specified, even in the manual. Right here. 
but only crash landing. If for whatever reason a Zeppelin must lose an altitude box while at altitude level 1 but has no ballast to counteract this. Yeah, counteracting, okay. So you always need to have a ballast for the landing. Yeah, makes sense. And then that. Landing is... Yeah, okay, that is... That is yeah, we can lower altitude, we have enough gas cells, and I still have ballast to counteract it. Yeah, if it would be like that, we would have to crash land. Because we can't counteract the landing procedure. But right now it is basically fine. And we are back at home. Okay, I was taking a lot of figure out. I was about to cut out this first mission because it was really, for me, as a tutorial. As Okay, next mission. Yeah, I think there's nothing to you need to roll for XP or whatever. Per siege points, I think it's gained one per four. I can check that out. Five successful missions. And for five, one prestige or experience point, I guess it is prestige. Yeah, so nothing happens like right now. Or is there something like fly your first mission? No. Oh, here. Yeah, there is one. Iron Cross second class. Yeah. And this gives us one prestige. Which we could... Invest into expert crew. Sixth sense intuition. Okay, I was commander skills and so what. Yeah, but raising one altitude before an aircraft encounter might be quite a good skill, but it costs us a most. And Kavesma only gives you new crew, only on new crew, yeah, so some crew needs to be basically dying. New Saint named crew arrive as expert. Okay. Good. Yeah, let's roll for a new assignment. Yeah, we will have one month refit time. So many other games. Yeah, so that was... Scout. Mission 1, Mission 2, Mission 3. Ah, you can fly... Ah, that is per month, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it, so we need a bit change that. Per month up to three sorties. Good. So it was basically, we are still in May, yeah? so we did some rolls for June. But it is basically like this, yeah, three missions per month. Okay, last mission for, um, for May. Are we 
gain the Iron Cross second class. We have one prestige point, but crew pretty sure doesn't advance. And next mission. Nine. Bomb London. Yeah, for P class it's fine, we can reach London. So that is the... We are going for London. Uh, that will be dangerous. Good, uh, we are rolling for starting weather. Clear, windy. So there will be wind. That are my wind direction for. No, that's basically what we have. Now we need to plan a route. I might want to go over sea. Otherwise, we might be intercepted by planes. Uh, we'll have to pay one fuel for that. Yeah, but let's first. Uh, Equip our bomber, so yeah, four bomb. Oh, what was it? Three bombs I wanted to go. Plus two of those. This puts us on regular ballast. Fuel is full. Aircraft engines. Ah, yeah, one thing I forgot is. But I think it was per three systems. That damage marked. That is also not exactly correct, I'm doing it here. I think one mission is always a refit. Or is it already incorporated? Yeah, I think that's already incorporated, but if you suffer more damage, you might lose a mission possibility in a month. So it's a bit different here. If you, for example, would now suffer a lot of damage, we might be not able to fly our third mission in May. Okay. Airship is equipped. We are raising altitude for free. Heading out for Charlie. This means we are fighting against the wind. I need to pay entire one fuel. We need to roll for bombing encounters and weather change. Five, nothing encountered. Damage or uh, breakdown? Sh no breakdown. Weather change. Clear, windy. It's the same. Do I need to re-roll that? No, it doesn't count. So we need to re-roll that. Good. Ah yeah, altitude management. I might drop a ballast. Go high, higher altitude. We are heading out to Bravo. That is paying half fuel. We'll put it up here. You can also flip the counter. And 
breakdown. Uh, that might be a breakdown. <coughs> Wireless is broken, which is not good because that might screw um, yeah our navigation. Good. Next weather change. Seven. Weather is changing to light rain. Wind direction is also shifting to northeast. No, that's not so good. Now I need to fight the wind. And yeah, the rain is pressing us down. I need to drop a ballast in order to maintain the altitude. Next, we need to roll for encounter. Five, six, seven, eight. I think that in the middle is always clear. Oh. Three, twelve. I need to memorize that so I don't need to check those charts so often. Uh, eight is clear. Fixing attempt. Let's check what is the fixing. Chance for a wireless. One, two, and everything else fails. Oh, immediately, completely. One D six, and we fail that thing. That thing is a corner. That is not good. Yeah, we might be off target, which will give us a think really bad bombing rows. We might also notice, uh, but I think we need to hit the target location. Can't bomb Norwich or something and go back home. Yeah, did I roll for encounter? Yeah. We are going to Norwich, we are fighting the wind, that is basically our entire fuel expenditure. Wait, is that correct what I did here? One. Zuck, zuck. What's the track weight? One. One. Half. It would be like this. And yeah, we gain plus one lift. However, in order to maintain that, I need to apply and be changing altitude bands. I need to drop ballast. Um, now, I need to lift one of my gas cells. And we paid that penalty, and I need to drop a further ballast in order to maintain that medium altitude for permanently. Mechanical breakdown? No. Encounter? Seven. Nothing. Yeah, it doesn't say there's a modifier, but I think if your wireless is down, you receive one penalty. Yeah, plus one navigation rows. That is not stated here. Oh, and one, but not for light rain. 
Rain, heavy rain, but not for light rain. Okay, so it is 50-50 if you manage that navigation. Roll. So in this zone we are done. Yeah. I can't fix anything. I roll for mechanical breakdown. We are heading over London. I'm fighting against the wind so I'm expanding the entire fuel. We have enough gas cells, I might definitely invest in order to get... You can also now ask, did I already... In yeah, I, let's vent three times, so that thing is depleted. And we are now at highest altitude, because I'm somewhat afraid of fighters. Highest uh, um, service altitude. And we are over London. First we need to roll for breakdowns. Yeah, 11. I think there's only 12. Nah, we lose an engine. One engine is damaged. Uh, bad timing. But currently not coming with any penalties. Then we need to roll for encounter. Eleven. Is it safe or is there something? I need to roll one after bump drop. Okay. But is there a special roll for bombing targets or London? Wow, should be the chance to hit is really low. So, but that's it. Otherwise, it will shoot me out of air. So that is fine. We are approaching our bombing target London. First we will determine if we are on course. I will drop a parachute flare. In order to have a better roll. And this counteracts our inoperational Wireless, so it is 66% chance. And we match it, yeah, those flares saved us. Navigation is successful. We are on target. And we will now proceed to drop our bombs. We could decide, now there is some tactics, we could decide first to drop those flaming bombs and then go in for another bombing run which will roll for another encounter and for another anti-aircraft fire, I think. Could you check anti-aircraft fire? Yeah. I don't know how dangerous it is. It looks dangerous, yeah. 2d6. 50% that we will get hit. Ah, okay, for 15 as a penalty. But for medium they gain a bonus, so that is evened out. Para flare versus AA. We could drop a flare in order to reduce the chance of getting aircrafted, uh, getting <laughs> the aircrafted. And we also need to roll for... Ah, here, yeah, searchlights, before firing AA. Yeah, that is dangerous, yeah. I don't want to stay too long over London. We will drop all bombs at the same time. And I think you need to roll for anti-aircraft fire before you drop your bombs. 
I need to check that out in the rules. I think could be that is again a twi twice. The tw Yeah, you can check for AA quality, there's optional rules, I might do that on the next. Now I want to keep it somewhat simple. Bombing, yeah, arrival at the target, we did the navigation roll. Okay, and if you're on target, you can also bump something or reacquire re a target. Uh, Jimmy, that's it or what? What is this anti- uh, here. After bombing, okay. anti echo fire occurs twice. Yeah, that is what I wanted to find out. Okay, this is here not before or after, but it is only after. Twice. Okay. Good. We will... Yeah, shouldn't change the altitude, should rather maintain, but doesn't matter. Should rather maintain the bo No, but we have enough gas in this. So... I will drop everything on one popping run. Good, let's, let's see what target we will pick up. We are in London, that is the targets. That is, uh, what is it? Forty. What Jimmy? What is that for a roll? What? One to forty. Who do who, who do uh, even roll for that? There's a D ten, D ten, D ten, and uh, how do I roll for London? Ah, here, 1d6 plus 1d20. Huh. What the heck? How, how do I combine them? Because the highest is 40. Uh, 1d20 would be 20, 26 would be the highest. Interesting. 1d6 plus 1d20. Why did they do that? So <laughs> Especially for bot. I mean, if they include a d20, why not? Mm. Yeah, you can roll basically one. If you roll 1d6, one and. Has one, two, three. Or do you even achieve a, a one? It's a one D six plus one D twenty. If you roll twenty and on the one D six one. Some 
strange. But twenty. Is that a multipli multipli yeah, multiplier? No, if 20 is multiplied by 6, then it's way higher than 40. That is a strange... Totally strange. Yeah, if you're off course, you might by accident bump something that you don't want to bump. That is interesting, but we are on target, so we don't need to bump. Yeah, I will do it differently. I don't know what the heck that is. What they try to achieve here, but we will roll. It says plus, huh? Okay, I can roll 6, and I can roll 20 with a 1d6. That is 26, that is not 40. It's a printing error, but... What's that first number? Wait. So I roll 6... 620... Nah, actually, that's a joke. Uh, you know what I will do? I will roll a multiplier. Eh? Either a multiplier of one or two. The first one or the first two that pops up, I will use. Then I roll the 1d20 and multiply that number. Because uh, it might be an easier solution, but I think that is really strange. Why didn't they do, I don't know, roll twice the d20 and then start with two? Go up to 40 and then you would have... Yeah, that would work out. Why so complicated? If you start with 2, up to 40 and roll twice the d20. And then you would have a result between 2 and 40. Ah, whatever. Okay, as mentioned, yeah, 5, 2. So we roll 2, that is the first 2, that is my multiplier. And now I roll the 20, we roll 9, so my target is 18. Yeah. War office, nice. That is an important bombing target and I will proceed to bomb it. That might be a printing error or some... So, uh, some solution I never encountered. Car. Definitely might be an easier one than what I'm doing here. So war office is an important target. Nice, I will definitely bomb that. And we are dropping now bombs. Good, first, no modifiers, we are at medium altitude, first bump, 6, misses, <laughs> second bump, hits, nice, uh, let's start the hits here, 
Let's simply keep them here. That is a hit. Now we're dropping regular bombs. Misses. Next bomb. Hits. Should be enough for a successful mission. Two damage. I think we already have at least a successful mission. Last bomb. Misses. Okay, a little result is fine. And by dropping one, two, three, four, five. We gain two lift. Yeah, but uh, it's not changing nothing because we already had service altitude. Maximum. Good, now let's resolve those hits here. Bomb damage. Yeah, we gained navigation success. So there's a modifier. We won't gain any modifiers for this because um, we are not on a second bombing run. Let's roll first for this one. That is 1d6. And we get minus one. We roll five, modified to four, that is two damage. We already have our target, basically two damage. Now the bomb is impacting. Three modified to two, three damage. So that is five damage points. It's basically five bomb, po bomb, bomb points. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, total bomb damage achieved is five. We can already lock that in our sheet. Which is mission successful already. You need two or more. Good, uh, we can store that. Ah, those flares. Not yet. But might, we might use them for anti-aircraft. Um, in order to counter anti-aircraft fire. Good. Bomb is done. Now the anti-aircraft will fire twice on us. But first, searchlights will apply. And we can fire a power flare. But let's first see what happens with those searchlights. Do we spot it? It's very likely. Six. Yeah, we are spotted. Roll 2d6, 3 to 5 spotted. Three to five. Ah, wait. Only that is spotting. Six is nothing. Yeah. We closely avoided getting hit by the searchlights. Nice. Now the other aircraft will fire on us. 2d6. I will drop a powder flare. And that is basically minus one for them. Ah, one, two, two engines out. So it is zero again, because one engine out gives also us a penalty. Yeah, we could roll for um, veterancy of the AA. You see there's an option rule. In 1415, two to five, six veteran, okay, that's easy to remember. One. Yeah, so green, that is good for us to gain minus one. Yeah, that you don't need to track that. 
So it is green anti-aircraft fire. They will now commence firing on us. First turn. Five, six, seven, uh, eight. Reduced to seven. They gain one hit. Nice. Good. Let's see what they hit. That is 2d6. That is 12 ballast. That is the worst thing I can hit. Ballast. Or one of our ballast carries was hit. Or tanks. Check. Is that damaged or destroyed immediately? Yeah, it is immediately destroyed. Uh, not good. Okay, second anti-aircraft round, I will fire again, a flare. Yeah, question is, do we want to roll again for anti-aircraft? I don't need, think so. Yeah, if it is green anti-aircraft, it's green anti-aircraft. I don't want to... But they might roll again for searchlight detection, 2d6. We roll 10, we are safe. And they will commence firing on us with a minus one modifier, 2d6. They roll two, minus one, yeah, ineffective. And we are able to escape. Ah, wait, one thing we forgot. Somewhere it was stated, roll after bombing. And after bomb drop. We need to roll again for encounter. Five. Nothing. No aircraft appearing. And we are heading back with the wind. Doesn't require fuel. Let's check what is our current altitude. Looks good. We can vent a lot of gas in order to get down to ground level if you want to land. But we need at least one ballast to counteract the landing, otherwise we will crash. Yeah, we need to roll for encounter. Do we need to roll for anti-aircraft fire over land tiles? I don't think so. Anti-aircraft is only rolled on the bombing target, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, did Jimmy, did nobody try to repair that engine? <laughs> Tony's, try to repair that engine, please. And what was it? One, two, fixed. Five, six, fail. In immediately. Uh, completely. Two. Thanks, yeah. Finally, somebody fixed that engine. Good. Uh, aircraft encounter, that is 2D6. That is 11, yeah. We need to watch out, that might be something. No, luckily not. Good. Yeah, yeah, so we need to roll for a mechanical breakdown. 11, that was something. Yeah, but Jimmy, the edge is again damaged. Okay. No encounter. Try please to repair that engine. Or, it didn't happen. But we might re-attempt. Mechanical breakdown. Five. I think that is safe. Nah, up to four something, but uh, five is nothing. Then encounter. Seven is nothing. Now wait, that encounter chart was somewhat mixed. No, seven is nothing. We're heading with the wind. Expecting no fuel. Uh, we'll attempt to repair. We fail completely. That engine is down. Next, no fuel expended because we're heading with the wind. Encounter. Ah, mechanical breakdown. Four, yeah, that is something I think that is a fuel leak, a uh, gas cell leak. Gas leak. 
which means we will lose altitude if we don't can't fix it. And one to four was a repair roll, I think. Did I already roll for encounters? No. Eleven. No wait, that is set there. That is two. That uh, might be something. Yeah. We might encounter aircraft because, but we, because we are over a sea tile, we need to roll what it is as only sea planes might and get marked. That was what chart again. The each. Yeah, the A chart, A four chart. It is fifteen. Actually, I'm supposed to know what is a sea plane, what not. Ah, Asterix, okay. Yeah. And there's low chance that this might happen. Five. <laughs> Didn't happen, yeah? No. So we treated it as no encounter. Repair attempt on the leaking gas. A few. Gas, yeah? Fails, yeah? That thing is. Is a six is a, is a complete fail or can we reattempt? Definitely that thing will leak. Ah, that here, that here. I need to use that one. So one is vented. And we will start to lose altitude. No, there's not only still leaking, there's no failed immediately. Uh, failed entirely. Good, we're losing one altitude because we have a leaking gas, sir. But that's not a problem, I won't re-roll now for everything. The chance is low that something might now explode. We are heading back to base, everything is fixed. Uh, we have enough reserve with everything. Good. And we also had enough ballast for counteract. And I think there's no... only thing in light rain is... But I think there's no crash rolls on landing or whatever. Good, clear weather. Yeah, and that was our bombing run on London. I think that worked out pretty good. We caused five damage. I think there's nothing to gain from that. Fifth. Wait, perhaps we yeah, but we already gained that. Yeah, we need 30, 30 bombing points for the poor Lemerit. And the crew will advance every five successful missions. Currently we are on two successful missions. Promotion probably after twelve months or what was it? Yeah. Same here. Good. Yeah, but isn't it better to bring only those? Oh, what is it? Red one. There's a modifier if you come in for a second bombing run. I mean, they also do the really good damage amount. I don't see really the downside. Perhaps if you are hit and carrying those things, you might die a horrible death. Ah, here, look at this. I was, yeah. Now that is enemy explosive ammo. I mean, that would be something if you carry this. I mean, here, look at the damage. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, worse rows do then quickly less damage. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's somewhat a consideration. Do we want to bring two of those or one bomb? But if you, if you roll a four, if you roll twice, you are on the same. Six, same. Yeah, the and on high damage, it is the same. I don't know. It somehow looks rather that you want to carry those. But perhaps there are some limitations for airships, how many they can carry. 
But other than that, those this loadout looks somehow better. Or perhaps it is the airship. Not all airships can carry those. Good. Okay, uh, that was a Zeppelin Raider, one patrol or two patrols. However, uh, that one patrol was somewhat requiring a lot of route checking. That London one here was a bit more fluid. I might be cutting out that scout because as it was not really correctly executed as we stayed in the in the area and re-rolled those ID rolls, which you're not supposed to do. You are supposed to risk reward do one roll, otherwise you lose contact to that ship group without identifying it. But yeah, it's a very interesting game, comes with some interesting mechanics. I mean, now it looks easy, but it is always at the beginning. I guess once the war progresses, yeah, those airships will really struggle. And if you then encounter... more and more aircraft encounters might be very dangerous. Some of them might carry special weapons which might rip you apart. And then it suddenly can go south, yeah. Okay, that was here Zeppelin Raider. And see you in the next episode.